Welcome. In this video, we're going to be exploring the kings of Israel. So we have two kingdoms. We have Israel in the north and Judah in the south. And both regions have their own kings. The founding king of Judah is none other than David himself. And the final king is his descendant, Zedekiah. Now, it's important to remember that all 20 kings of Judah are actually descendants of David. So in Judah, only those from the house of David are considered royalty. Let's now look at Israel, whose founding king is Jeroboam, and whose final king is Hosea. Now, in Israel, there is no clear line of royal succession. Israel is a mess. There are constant coups and government overthrows. And of its 19 kings, there are multiple different houses, meaning kings do not descend from a single person as they do in Judah. To put it simply, Israel is absolute chaos, especially in comparison to the stability of Judah. So let's now delve into the chaos of Israel's kings. We're going to just be going through the first 50 years of Israel's existence, so from King Jeroboam to King Omri. I'm going to be calling this period of time a disorderly beginning. But just before we begin here, if you're enjoying my videos and you want me to produce more, please make sure to hit that like button, leave me a comment and subscribe. If we could get to 60 likes on this video, that would be fantastic. Also, the best part of my day is always reading your comments, so please comment below. All of these things really do make the algorithm happy, so please hit that like button, leave me a comment and subscribe. All right, let's get back into the content now. We're going to begin with the first king of Israel, King Jeroboam, who had a son called Nadab. But Nadab only reigned for two years until Baasha conspired against him and killed him. We read this in 1 Kings 15, quote, As soon as Baasha was king, he killed all of the house of Jeroboam. He left to the house of Jeroboam not one who breathed until he had destroyed it, end quote. Now, we're going to be seeing this phrase often. Every time a king overthrows another, the usurper will always kill all of the relatives of that former king to ensure that no one seeks revenge. We continue to read in 1 Kings 15, quote, Basha did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam and in the sin that he caused Israel to commit, end quote. This again is going to be a constant phrase in 1 Kings 15, the way of Jeroboam, and it's referring back to the founding sin of Israel, and that is when Jeroboam sets up his own religion in the north. So that is with its own place of worship, that being the golden calves of Dan and Bethel, they have their own priesthood, their own rituals. This is a sinful religion that Jeroboam has constructed to rival that of Judas. So this is the sin of Jeroboam, and all of the kings of Israel will take part in it. All right, so after Basha, his son takes the throne and his son is called Elah. But Elah is only on the throne for two years until Zimri, the commander of the army, comes and kills him. We again read this in 1 Kings 16. Quote, Elah's servant Zimri, commander of half of his chariots, conspired against him. When he was at Titra drinking himself drunk, Zimri came in and struck him down and killed him. End quote. We continue to read, When Zimri began to reign, as soon as he had seated himself on his throne, he killed all of the house of Basha. He did not leave him a single male of his kindred or his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all of the house of Basha. All right, at this point, things get a little complicated. Remember, Zimri was a commander of the army. But there were some other soldiers who didn't agree with Zimri being the king now. They would prefer their commander, Omri, to be king instead. So what ends up happening is that Omri and his soldiers overtake Zimri and kill him. So we have one army commander killing another army commander to be king. A little chaotic, but let's stay with me here as we read 1 Kings 16. Quote, Zimri reigned seven days in Titra. So let's just stop there for a moment. Zimri was only king for seven days until Omri and his people overtake him. We continue to read, quote, when the troops who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired and he has killed the king. Therefore, all of Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day in the camp. End quote. Again, just to summarize this really quickly. So Zimri overthrew Elah. But then what happens is that some soldiers hear this and decide they would prefer their army commander, Omri, to be king instead. So they go and they kill Zimri. So this is what we read next. Omri and his soldiers go and kill Zimri. Quote, when Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the king's house. He burnt down the king's house over himself with fire and died, end quote. So Zimri, obviously not wanting to fight Omri, just decides to burn his house over himself to kill himself uh, because he sees Omri coming. All right, let's now continue on. And as you can imagine, things continue to get confusing because now Omri is king. But what ends up happening is that a man contests Omri's position as king. And this man is called Tibni. And what we read in the text is that 
for a period of time, Israel is split as to who the actual king is. Some people think Omri is the king, and some people think Tibni is the king. So we have an almost civil war over who the king of Israel is. Is it Omri or is it Tibni? Until, of course, Omri kills Tibni, and now Omri is the clear king. We read this again in 1 Kings 16, and this is really an interesting passage. It reads, quote, Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. Half the people followed Tibni, son of Ginnah, to make him king, and half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri overcame the people who followed Tibni, son of Ginnah. So Tibni died, and Omri became king, end quote. All right, so now Omri is the king. And this now concludes the first 50 years of Israel's history. And hopefully you can see why I called it a disorderly beginning. It's because Israel is absolute chaos, especially in comparison to the stability of Judah with its clear line of royal succession through David. So having now summarized the first 50 years of Israel's history, what we're now going to do is move on to the next period of time, which I'm calling the House of Omri. And that is for the next 40 years, descendants of Omri will sit upon the throne of Israel. Then we have a period of time in which the descendants of Jehu sit on the throne. Then we have a disorderly end until the very end in 722 BC. Now, the House of Omri is a really interesting period, and that's because we have a lot of archaeology around it. We have the Mesha Stella, and we have the Black Obelisk. So we're really going to be diving into the archaeology of this period of time, so this 40-year period in which the descendants of Omri are on the throne. But what we're going to do now is we're going to talk about the JEDP theory, and I'm also going to very briefly talk about this division between Omri and Tibni, because I think it's really interesting. But this is going to be exclusive to my patrons. So if you do want to see the end of this video, please consider becoming a patron. Patrons keep the lights on, it keeps this channel going, so please consider becoming a patron today. If you're not in a position to become a patron, please make sure you hit that like button, leave me a comment, and subscribe. Thank you for watching until the end, and unless you're a patron, I'll see you in the next video.